How did Sam get on site at the Lincoln Memorial? Easy. Secret Service acting on orders from the President got him there. Why'd they do that? Oh, that's a little trickier. You see, the name Lucius Galliard got Grimm's attention. She knew he was a businessman Reed was working with. But Reed kept things compartmentalized, and that was one of the aspects of his operation Grimm had no access to. It pissed her off. What Grimm did know was that Reed was meeting Galliard at the memorial in the morning, right after some bullshit photo op speech the VP was given. Galliard's people were handling event logistics, which was why he'd be there. Grimm took it to the president, who didn't like the coincidence. She wanted to know what they were talking about, and that meant getting Sam on site for audio surveillance. And more, if necessary. I'm inside. What now? The president's on the line, Sam. We need to eavesdrop on the conversation Reed's about to have with Galliard. So bug the memorial. We thought of that, Mr. Fisher. Galliard's people scrubbed the site in preparation for my vice president's charming little speech. And there was no time to get new equipment in place. And what's plan B? You are. This morning's camera equipment is still in place. Get to the control booth, hack the camera controls to record the conversation, and uplink the feed to us. Just like that. All right, I'm on it. I thought it was pretty good. You did? Really? The dude's right. We gotta protect the borders, or the next thing you know, bam, we got terrorists blowing up downtown Chicago or something. Yeah, but we gotta be smart about it. I don't know if giving the Pentagon a blank check is the way to go, you know? I mean, what if it's just a scam and they're making shit up to scare us? That's crazy talk. They're not gonna pull something like that. There's real danger out there, man, and the VP is calling it like it is. Samson's already running for president. Well, maybe he should be. You ask me, he's got the right idea. In the primaries? Nah. When Caldwell picked him for VP, that was a big deal. Yeah, first mixed ticket in I don't know how long. Yo, it worked. She got my vote. You know, everyone talks about reaching across the aisle, but she went and did it. Yeah. Weird that you picked Samson, though. He's got a weird one. He's a blue dog Democrat. Probably the only one she could get the party to accept on the ticket. Yeah, but you get all these rumors that he's in bed with big agro business, that he's got his hands dirty, that he's just looking out for number one, you know what I mean? Hey, at least he's keeping it in his pants. <laughs> That's new around here. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Form like this. He is the vice president. Isn't this what they're for? Photo ops and speeches nobody cares about, where the rest of the administration does the real work? I guess. I was just surprised that he came out as hard line as he did against some of the president's policies. <laughs> He's just grandstanding. You know what? I'll bet he can't stand the fact that his boss is a woman. Now you're being ridiculous. He's just more determined on national security issues than the president is. No, he wants to sound that way, which means he's really setting that up as his big campaign issue for the next election. You think he's gonna run? Oh, I'm sure of it. I think he's running right now, and he'll do anything he can to undermine Caldwell. In the camera booth. Now what? You need to sync the feed from the console to me so that I can see what we're getting. It should be easy to hack. 
Hang on. That's it. Now I need you to get comfortable with those camera controls. We're dealing with directional mics here, high-end, but they're integrated with the camera focus. Get Reed and Galliard in the shot, and we'll get the audio. Miss them, and we get nothing. And here they come... now. Lucius, I'm glad you can make it. We've got some last-minute logistic issues to discuss. We're 24 hours out and you want to talk paperclip requisitions here, now. The site's clean, and I knew you'd be here since your company did the setup on the Samson speech. One of my companies, yes. I have several. <laughs> which includes Black Arrow, which I assume is what you want to talk about. We can talk about Black Arrow shortcomings later. I want to talk about what I need to make this go off smoothly. Oh, do you now? I was impressed that he said that. What did you think of Samson's speech? It was a nice piece of grandstanding. He should give his writers a ring. He swears he writes all his speeches himself. I'm sure it plays well for the folks back home. I don't like the chances. You don't like Samson? I don't trust Samson. But... Better cool, I'd be using it. Which is, incidentally, something you should keep in mind. My, my, are you actually threatening me? I thought we were both more civilized than that. This is what your people want. The people I represent want you to deal with Fisher. Stop wasting time. Stop wasting their money. If Megiddo's getting cold feet... Let, let me make this clear, Reed. Megiddo planned this operation. Megiddo paid for this operation. And Megiddo would be very upset if anyone were allowed to interfere with it. He's not going to interfere because my men will deal with him, since Black Arrow wasn't able to. I'll worry about Black Arrow. You stick to the plan. Like I was saying, it's interesting that you chose this place to meet, of all places. And why would you say that? The eyes of history are upon it. Making history. Make no mistake about that. I'd rather keep our part in things out of the history books, thank you. Really? I thought you enjoyed the spotlight more than that. I'll do the song and dance when I have to, but the man on stage is the one with the least cover. And cover's important, especially at a time like that. Which would explain why you're still here. Executive oversight. I hate leaving things to chance, or third party. You're supposed to be in Paris. All hell's about to break loose. My men will be very busy. So I cannot guarantee your safety. I'm not asking you to. Are you sure? This is to protect you. And the operation. Some things require a personal touch. Now if that's everything, we're done here. I'll see you when it's over. Goodbye, Lucius. Let's go after Reed. No, the smart play is to talk to Galliard. We can find Reed later. I concur. I want to know more about Megiddo, and Lucius Galliard is the only source we have. Okay, go. I'll freeze Galliard in place. Galliard. Mr. Galliard, my name is Anna Grimm's daughter. I'm calling on behalf of Tom Reed at Third Echelon. I know who you are. I just finished talking with your boss. What does Reed want now? Director Reed felt that the resolution that you two came to probably wasn't satisfactory for all sides, and was wondering if you'd be open to further discussion on the matter. Oh, how very thoughtful of him. The answer is still no. He'd like to know if there's anything else that could be put on the table to get you to reconsider. Ah, oh, a bribe. Mr. Galliard, I think you're misunderstanding the purpose of my call. No, I don't think I am. Let me explain something, Miss Grimm's daughter. All I want from Tom Reed is for him to do his damn job. Why don't you tell him that for me? If you'll hold for one second, I'll put Director Reed on the line and you can tell him yourself, sir. 
You know what? You do that. You really shouldn't talk to Grim like that. Guards! Where the hell are my guards? It's just you and me, Lucius. Let's talk. What's your connection with Reed? If you ask nicely, I tell you. Huh? If he's just hired help. God, you're thick. This is bigger than Reed, bigger than Third Echelon. Uh, they're just convenient. And why does Reed want you out of town? Ugh. Your enhanced interrogation techniques need work. He wants to run the show when the EMPs are triggered. There's three of them, scattered around the city. In a few hours, they go off, and he gets to play commando. There are people he wants to impress. <laughs> the EMPs, where do I find them? Say please. I don't know. That's part of the plan. You see? You can't stop it, Fisher. It's too big. It's too late. And the people I work for? This is just part of what they've got going on. Megiddo. Who are they? Try harder, Fisher. Megiddo. Who are they? They're the ones who run this town. In Moscow, in Beijing, in any other place that matters. <laughs> They're the ones who are going to get me out of this one piece. And once Reed is finished at the white... <laughs> Oh, Reed. Damn it. Officer in trouble! Sam, what's happening? Galliard's dead. The shooter's running. We need him alive. He may be our only link between Third Echelon and Megiddo. I've got a visual. He's on the stage.
gun down at the memorial. He's outside and on the move again, Sam. Officer in trouble! Any idea why? I'll tap into their Como to find out. Everybody out! Now! I'm seeing him exit the cafe. He's headed for the parkway, Sam. He's headed for that car. We're going to lose him. Sam, are you all right? Put it into practice. There are multiple third echelon squads converging on your position right now. What about the cops? Third echelon called them off when they called up the shooter. Then the gloves are off. I need a ride out of here. The Secret Service agent who brought you in is on his way to extract you. But until he gets there, you're on your own. wave of operatives is on its way. Check the cafe. Time to go, Sam. Your ride is here. Where? On the bridge behind the cafe. Go. 